My name's Mark Adams and I'm a sheep and beef farmer in the, uh, in the Fairley Basin. Um, uh, thanks for in inviting me here. Sarah put up the PowerPoint, um, why are we all here? Essentially I'm here because Sarah told me to be here. Um, look, this, um, this, this forum is being um, funded by the, the, the Canterbury Mural Forum and, and I acknowledge Craig and the forum. It's a, it's a powerful um, collaborative model, the forum, and, and probably the envy of other sort of mayors around, around New Zealand. And, um, and it's good to see you sort of leveraging and, and, and getting involved in this. Um, I, I spoke recently at the, um, the DARE conference, or the AGM and conference in, in Wellington, promoting um, good environmental outcomes and, and planting trees and what have you. And, and um, at the end of the, my presentation, one of the questions was from a, a lady in the, in the, from the central North Island who, who um, is really concerned around rampant deforestation and communities being swallowed up. And um, that, that to me is a, a terrible outcome. And um, you know, Mark mentioned that it's, um, you know, the price of land is a self-regulator, but when you're able to buy a whole property and um, often you're not differentiate, differentiating between the soil types and just uh, planting the whole property in trees, that's, that's, I mean, where's the social licence for that? And, and see, seeing good productive soils swallowed up in trees, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a believer in the right tree in the right area for the right reason. And, um, and I see with the, the government incentives, it's, a, it's another um, example of um, good intentions but, but sometimes poorly thought through, um, poorly thought through, and, and not robust parameters put in place. Um, and, and yeah, you can often get um, some pretty poor outcomes. So look, I've just um, I've just put up here a, a farm photo. So this is um, four k's out of Fairley on the Geraldine Road. I just pop over here. Um, so the the main road goes just past here on the way to the farm barn. Um, they come down Tondas Road and then there's Spur Road which goes right up and over to Raincliffe. So Raincliffe Station is the other end of my, my road. Um, I've got a 6.5k, 6.5 hectare wetland which we fenced off in the mid 90s um, using um, some incentives. And, um, and that's, that's been a great example. We have an Airbnb up here and people look out over the wetland and over to the mountains, Fox's Peak, Mount, Mount Dobson. And, and um, it's been a great way of uh, telling, telling our story and, and why we've got a wetland and what it does. And, uh, and, and just, again, promoting, promoting what we do and promoting what I think is good stewardship. Um, so the house is at 300 metres. The top of the farm is 575 metres. So it's a quite a snort up this hill. And, and, and every day there'll be 20 or 30 walkers um, paying penance and uh, doing the hard yards. So um, this property has some, some, probably the less productive soils are up in the higher rainfall. Um, and, and, and I'll sh show some photos of that just, just in a minute. But something that hasn't been touched on, I've just harvested this, this forest here and it's pre-1990. If, if you cut down trees, that are pre-1990, then you have an obligation to replant them. You, um, you can probably rip out about two hectares at, at, a, at a time, at a, at, a, at a harvest cycle, but um, I'm looking as I drive around, I'm seeing a lot of pre-1990 trees cut down and they're not being replanted. And if someone comes up your driveway, um, you, you could be in for a surprise. So um, if, you, if you're harvesting trees, pay for good advice. In fact, in this whole carbon story, pay for good advice. Just, uh, just put that out there. Um, so I'll just sh show a couple of photos of, of what, what I'm proposing to do. I, I have been rejected twice um, from the emissions trading scheme because I haven't had the scale. And, and I'm offended by that. I, I just think it's poor form that mum and dad farmers can't currently um, through lack of scale, engage when, when collectively we make up a, um, a large part of the forest holding, recognise that there's ways of getting around that, 
but technology can get around that. And, um, and, and when, when you've got skin in the game, uh, I'm, for instance, I'm a very tactile learner, I, I need to be hands-on. And, and I suspect for a lot of um, owner-operators, that, that's, that's the case. So looking forward to us all being included. Uh, so that, yeah, that's a, a map of the farm. Um, what, what do I push here? Oh, you've got an arrow. Okay, so first and foremost, um, that's why you plant trees for the harvest. That's, that's, that's your fallback. I mean, up until uh, carbon, trading carbon, that was all it was about. And, and so I'm, I'm um, uh, looking to plant uh, more of my farm into trees, um, but fundamentally it's for succession. The, the current harvest has been really important uh, with family succession. And, uh, and so I'm now going to um, you know, put in, um, a, well, currently we're harvesting 12 hectares. Um, and when we're finished, we'll, we'll have closer to um, probably about 70 odd hectares planted over the next two or three years. I, um, I'm looking at um, planting trees for uh, succession and, and if I can trade carbon, then, then that's, that to me is going to be the cream on the top. So just a, just a couple of photos of, uh, of, of harvesting. Now, um, the, that was a mixture of pine and fir. Um, the pines are returning me $550 net per year for 27 years. And I'm really happy with that return. Um, the, when you consider that through most of the 90s I lost money um, and we've had some pretty lean years in there and um, but the Douglas fir component of this um, uh, those trees are 80 years old and so the return on them is pretty poor really um, and considering it's also on my best land as, I, as I'll, I'll show you that's just I'll put that photo on because it's weird because it's some serious machinery there it was impressive to watch now this um, this is the, the, the top of the farm at um, 560 metres and it just, this photo sort of gives you a sense of how steep this face is. Um, so this face is, basically he's on a 10 hectare face um, looking down into the neighbour's fodder beat and the neighbour's forest. Um, this, this area was, um, it's just, it's been um, since probably the mid 80s, it's been just gorse and Hawthorn and Barbary, um, and and it was also a face that we used government incentives in the 70s to clear, and now we're using government incentives to plant into trees, and it was it was land that should never have been cleared, and and farmed. It was um, it's steep, it's erosion prone, um, it's just got it's just just decades of gorse and weed seed. And, um, and really it needs to be in trees. And, yeah. So I've decided to root rake it, and that's what it looks like at the moment. So um, this area, there's a 10 he hectare block below that, that we've been able to farm right the way through. And then there's just been this gorse face. Well, I'm putting that 10 hectares in as well. That doesn't look steep, but um, when you pull up there, your wheel stand, the four wheel drive, if you don't have your weights on the front you end up on your back wheels and so it's steeper than it looks and then it gets really steep coming up into here and um, it, as you can see on that lower block it's just all um, that's all gorse that I've, I've had to spray probably every three or four years we're in there spraying so ideal land for growing trees and as you can see there's trees sort of that's Neil Campbell's farm looking down towards Raincliffe and those trees on that face are thriving. And then looking back the other way, that's Evan Williams, and you're looking up and towards Fox's Peak and, and what have you, but again, his trees have thrived. And I'm the, I'm the Muppet that's been trying to farm in the middle. Um, the reason why I've persevered with this, this steeper, steeper face is that it, um, we often get a metre of snow in the winter, the top of the hill, and within days it falls off that face. And, and over the years I've been able to put stock in there. But because it's, um, you know, it grows a little grass, then you've only got a couple of days and then you've got to move them out. 
so this is just coming back from that and this is probably a better sorry i'll just uh, that's probably a better look so that face that we're clearing is just over the just over the brow from there and then it comes up into another paddock which has that sort of country on it now again um, very gorse prone i'm constantly spraying it but really handy really handy in it when it gets dry uh, just to put a few cattle in there and so you know look i'm, I'm torn because i'm a stock farmer and having, having these little uh, corners that you can tuck stock away and buy a couple of weeks have been really important to my farming system. But, but when I, I look at um, the, the current stumpage and I look at carbon farming, it just, it, it just means that it has to go into trees as well. Um, I didn't mention, or I may not have mentioned, the bottom of the farm is around, um, uh, what is it, about 350 mils, about 26 inches of rain. The top of the farm, um, here is, is that, that's probably sitting in around 700 mils and then further along uh, along the hill then it's, it, it's, um, it's a good 42 inches or over 850 mils. So again this is just another gully that I've got up in that neck of the woods and that's just really shallow soil, um, gorse prone, I'm always spraying, you see I've just spot sprayed it, I do it by hand and um, and every two or three, and so we had a wet, um, this last wet November, then we had a wet February prior to that. Well, the gorse just exploded, and it was it seemed within months, plants were holding hands. It was rampant. Just another, another look at that, that sort of country. Just um, interesting, um, through this process, I, um, I asked the council for a map what did they see as my survey boundary? And I found 10 hectares that I didn't know I owned. Neil Campbell thought he owned it. And when you see when you see it, it's tiger country, and you can see why the guys who are charged with putting the boundary fences in um, chose an easier route. But but suddenly, uh, uh, you know, my, my numbers never added up until until now. Now this um, this block here shows what happens over time. If it's completely left alone, that hasn't been grazed for probably 30 years, and now the natives coming up through it, and so it's been gorse, um, barberry, and weeds, and now you can see the native. When you go around further, it's all native, and the bird song is just it's just stunning. So this is just another wee block that we've harvested, and it just shows again on top of that on top of that hill, um, good soil, and then just a dark face. And, um, and that, in, in 27 years, grew a very good crop of trees. And that's just a face, just along, along from it. Good soil, a face, and then, and then actually pretty reasonable soil. Um, and so that's all about to replant it, be replanted. Um, and then just, this is just, at the start, I showed you those Oregon's being harvested. This is where they were harvested from. So my farm is essentially all on a hill, I've only got one flat, and 80 years ago someone decided to cut it in half and plant it in trees. So this is my chance to get it back. And so the, the, the work ground component, if I go back, the, 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 the grass component, that's about seven acres down there to the road, and I reckon that's about five acres on that flat that I'm gonna, that I'm gonna pull on, which is that two hectare threshold from pre-1994 so I can fly under the radar. So I'm going to get my flat back, but everything else will be replanted. So that's, that's just, um, um, just a, um, sort of my property and just, just, some, just some thoughts around it. So, so just re reaffirming, um, I'm, I'm growing trees for succession and I'm, I'm, and I'm growing them for, for stumpage. And, and looking to trade carbon on top of that is the cream for me. I mean, it's, uh, the, the carbon market's real, uh, it exists, and we as farmers uh, have a great opportunity here. Um, but, but I, um, and, and my good friend Mike Porter, as he's already spoken, um, you know, being, involved with, being involved with Federated Farmers, you develop a, a natural cynicism. And, um, and so, you know, as, as sheep and beef farmers who, who get paid to produce, um, the, the idea of trading carbon is, is you know, we're just, you know, the, 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 there's, a, there's a degree of cynicism and, and, and I welcome that. Um, but, but equally, it's, there's some serious opportunities out there. Um, I, I, I think there's an opportunity for, for biodiversity, but biodiversity 
um, isn't the most efficient converter of carbon, as, as we've found out. And, and I would say probably some of the hardwoods, the slower growing trees are also not as able. And, and, and the pine tree, love them or hate them, seems to be the, 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 the tree for the moment in, in, in most, of the, most of the sites that I've seen. Um, I, I think that's pretty, pretty much me. I, I mean, I, I, again, I, I, this ETS thing just, just does my head in. I mean, again, I'm, I'm cynical. And, and, you know, and especially in regards to it, driving behaviour change. And, and I mean, because I, 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 see, I see it as a wealth transfer platform. And, and so, and, and, and that's fine. And, and so it's like a share market. It's a, it's a, once you get your head around it, you get some confidence. Um, but but I, I, I'm skeptical as to really, if it's going to drive, I see it as an, an academic response. And, and, and I'm, I'm not convinced. Um, I, I still think that there's a, there's, there's a way of, of working with farmers as stewards of the land um, and recognising that, you know, protecting the soil, the water and the air, um, that's, that's kind of, that's on us. That's, that's what we do. We work, we work with the natural capital that's available to us. And I think, I think there's an angle of working, there's, there's a way of working in that space that will resonate with farmers. And, um, and I don't think that's really been probably leveraged or we haven't really um, been clever around the way that we've, we've pitched this to farmers. And um, as well as there's a, a carbon trading platform that we can engage in um, if, if, uh, if we have the scale. So that's, that's pretty much me. I, I, um, I'm, I'm done if there's any, any questions.